Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and on today's video, we're going to be smelting down some platinum catalytic converter beads. All right, guys, so here's these beads we're going to be working with today, and these are uh, little ceramic beads coated in a very, very fine film of platinum that acts as a catalyst. Uh, so when the waste exhaust from whatever system this is from goes through these beads, it helps oxidize and burn off any of the remaining uh, organics um, from the process. And so uh, we're going to take these and smelt them down, try and recover the platinum, and we're going to go over four or five different experiments to see which one works the best. All right, so here's our beads. I've weighed out uh, about 100 grams, and I'm surprised at how much volume there is. There's actually a ton of volume here for a little bit of weight. Um, and then I've got a, a flux recipe here. This is 100 grams of anhydrous borax, 100 grams of soda ash, and 50 grams of silica sand. And so that's kind of a real standard fire assay flux. And our first uh, experiment here is to make sure that we can totally decompose all this ceramic uh, in these beads and um, get a good decomposition for our smelt so we don't have lumps or uh, a bunch of chunks in there when we pour it. So I'm not going to use any collector metal. I'm just going to figure out what we need for a flux to flux this uh, ceramic and then we can start trying to recover our platinum. All right, we got them all mixed up. We got it in our crucible here. So we'll put it in our furnace and see what kind of uh, decomposition we get with this first smelt. So that first pour didn't go very well. You can see uh, a bunch of beads and stuff still in there that didn't get decomposed by the flux. So here's our slag from the first run. There was no metal on the top. I kind of broke the, the top of the pyramid off and there wasn't any bead or anything on there, which wasn't expected. This next pour is, uh, originally I did 200 grams of soda ash, 100 grams of silica, and 50 grams of borax. And then I'm gonna add to it strictly soda to try and make it more basic, hopefully which will help dissolve those alumina oxides that make up the ceramic of those beads. All right guys, here's our first three uh, samples we've done. Again, no collector metal on any of these. I was just experimenting, trying to figure out which flux recipe will give us the best decomposition of these uh, ceramic beads. Over here is our first one. And you can see, uh, it's pretty glassy. This is kind of an intermediate slag, so it's not real acidic, it's not real basic. Um, I used uh, some borax and some silica as well as some soda ash on this one. But I don't know if you can see this or if the camera will get it, but um, a, lot of the, a lot of the beads are still whole. They're, they're, uh, they didn't decompose or dissolve in there. Um, and so this, this flux recipe didn't really work out very well, uh, but it's nice, green, glassy. Um, but again, we didn't get that decomposition we wanted. And so our next one, was this one here. Again, real green and glassy. But this I used a lot more soda ash in, which makes it uh, a lot more basic. And this one, when I was stirring it and when it was in the crucible, it looked like I got real good decomposition, but 
Th this right here, I don't know if this is just a bunch of small little pieces. It's really hard to see even in person. Um, but again, this, this is suspect to me when you get a, a kind of a gradation in the slag. And uh, so it's not all uniform. And I, I, didn't, I didn't really get too excited about this one. Also, because I use so much soda ash in the crucible, it boiled and frothed and took forever to calm down. And um, it didn't, it, it, it's hard in the crucibles as well when you had that much base. And then the third one, which is still really hot, but let's see if I can get a piece of it here and how long I can hold it. This one I just used um, borax. I, I used like 10 parts borax to one part of those beads. I'm really happy with the borax because again, it's all uniform. It, it completely dissolved the beads and uh, it's really calm uh, when it comes up to temperature. It doesn't boil and it doesn't froth and stuff like that. And it's really, really gentle on the crucibles so I can use the crucibles over and over again. Uh, so now I'm gonna take uh, some of the beads and I'm gonna start adding collector metals to them. I'm gonna test out three or four different collector metal types and then we'll uh, send this slag off for assay to determine the best recovery uh, based on the different collector metals. All right, for our first uh, kind of production test with collector metal, we're gonna use uh, 100 grams of the beads and 500 grams of borax initially. And then if I need to add more borax to it once it's melted to help dissolve the beads, I can always just add more uh, during the melt. All right, and for our collector metal on this first one, I'm gonna do something that's uh, probably absolute heresy for most of you guys. I've got a uh, five ounce silver bar here. So we're gonna use that for our collector metal. And there's the weight of our initial silver bar for our collector metal. All right, we'll take our silver bar here. We're just gonna kind of push it down there in the middle of the charge. Now we got our silver down in there and hopefully as it melts, it'll collect platinum on the way down. And then once it pools at the bottom, uh, any remaining platinum in the charge will uh, combine with the silver as the charge circulates during heating. Okay, there's our silver collector metal, and it looks like we lost a little bit, maybe five hundredths of a gram or so, um, which isn't a big deal, uh, but if there was a significant amount of platinum in there, I would have expected the button to weigh more. So that's a little suspect. Uh, but when we do our, our next uh, round with the lead collector, we can cupel the lead away and see if we end up with uh, a precious metal prill.
Well, here's our cupel from the first uh, lead collector we did. And you can see there's a little tiny bead in there, but it's really small um, and pretty disappointing actually. The other thing is this is the smelt I did right after the silver one. And uh, I use the same crucible. So I'm expecting this might be uh, a little bit of silver. And I also know that my collector metal, my lead has a little bit of silver in it. So um, having a really small bead, having the silver gone before it, and knowing there's some silver contamination in my lead, I'm not really excited. There's a lot of platinum in here. But let's get the bead weighed and we'll see how much it weighs and we'll go from there. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can make this work. Here's our little bead, 0 0.02 grams. All right, and here's our second bead from using the uh, litharge and the, the lead oxide. And it's quite a bit more dull gray. It's not shiny kind of silver like our first one was, but it's still real small. So let's get it weighed. All right, here we go for our litharge button, the bead. So about five hundredths of a gram or so. Um, and typically when you cupel PGM metals with lead, you end up with about half to a third of the button still containing some lead because the amount of platinum keeps the melting point real high. And so the button freezes before all the lead can cupel away. But uh, even if that is the case here, we still have our point. 0.02 to 0.03, maybe 0.04 grams of uh, platinum, which is not very much. All right, guys, so there you have it. Um, those bees didn't have much platinum in them, or at least any platinum that I could recover. Uh, I'm certainly not a professional assayer, uh, but I think if there was some significant amount of platinum or PGM metals in there, uh, I would have recovered uh a significant amount of them or, or at least you know 50 percent the silver lining to the whole thing though is that we found a, a pretty good recipe for totally decomposing the ceramic beads and so i'm going to use that in the future if i ever do catalytic converters again out of cars uh and also uh the the litharge and the pbo and flour that we used actually had a, a little bit more uh recovery than just using lead as a collector metal and so I'll probably use that in the future as well. And, and that is essentially how a real assay is done. Um, but just running the numbers here, let's say there's about 0.03 grams of platinum per 100 grams of material. If you do the math out, that's about 300 grams a ton. And at today's prices, that's right around 8,000 US dollars or so. So those beads probably aren't economically viable to smelt down to recover the platinum. Uh, a leaching system may work a little bit better, but that's out of my scope. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. See in the process. Again, we didn't get the result with the platinum we wanted, but um, hope we learned something. And uh, I'm going to use what we learned in some future videos. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can find our contact information in the description below, or you can leave a comment as well. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.